Hey guys, in today's era of advanced science and understanding of anatomy, it's often difficult for us humans as a whole to comprehend just how far we have come in the past century. The beginning of the 1900s illustrates just how little we knew about the sciences as a whole. Radiation was a foreign concept to most chemists and physicists, and there was still a lot to be known about the human anatomy, even though humans have been dissecting bodies for thousands of years at this point. One example of our collective misunderstanding of human anatomy comes during the early 1900s when an interesting phenomenon started affecting families of the middle and upper classes, what we today know as SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Even today, we don't know exactly what causes SIDS, although we have a better understanding of what SIDS is. Most medical professionals believe SIDS is associated with a portion of an infant's brain that controls breathing and arousal from sleep. We also know that babies sleeping on their stomach or on a soft surface increases the likelihood of SIDS, as well as overheating at night. However, as you can imagine it took a while for scientists to piece this all together, and at the beginning of the investigation of what causes SIDS, and with the loosely bound ethics of the early 20th century, an epidemic was about to unfold. In the early 1900s, it was a widespread notion in Western culture that bodies of diseased people were not to be autopsied. I mean, who would have guessed people didn't want their loved ones to be examined after death? This would lead to a grave shortage of human corpses, so people began digging up people's graves to steal their corpses to sell to anatomists. This wasn't a problem for your average family. They could usually hire a guard for the first week or two after death so that no grave robbers would disturb their loved ones in the great beyond. After around a week, the bodies would become so rotten that no anatomist would even want the bodies. However, poor people often couldn't afford guards for graves, and grave robbers actually would steal the bodies of the diseased, or buy them outright, and sell them to anatomists so that they could dissect them in colleges and gain a better understanding of the human body. The only problem was that only the bodies of poor people would be investigated, and because of this, most scientists and doctors developed a flawed understanding of a proper human body. This came to head when investigating the causes of SIDS. In the early 1900s during World War I and the Great Depression, there were loads of stress, and one of the effects of stress is the shrinking of the thymus gland in your chest. The shrinking of the thymus gland doesn't actually harm you too much, but when all the people you dissect are poor, and poor people are usually pretty stressed, Western society developed a warped understanding of what a proper thymus gland looks like. Humans thought a smaller thymus gland was actually a normal one, because only stressed corpses were analyzed. So when babies started dying from unknown causes with their normal sized thymus glands, many doctors immediately jumped to the conclusion that the babies enlarged the thymus glands were asphyxiating them and causing them to no longer breathe. Because of this medical misunderstanding, it became standard practice to radiate the infant's thymus gland to try and shrink it. Let me say that again. It became standard practice to radiate an infant's thymus gland to make it smaller. Obviously, this didn't help in the fight against SIDS, and it wasn't until the 1940s when it became common knowledge that stress causes the thymus gland to shrink. Nevertheless, the radiation of the thymus gland caused thousands of boomers to develop deadly cancers in their chest and neck area, especially thymus and thyroid cancers. It's unclear exactly how many people were affected, however the low estimate for the amount of people that developed thyroid cancer due to this malpractice is 10,000 while the total amount of people that developed cancer in their chest and neck area because of this could be as high as 75,000. Either way, this is just another example of death caused by doctors. In conclusion, don't radiate your child's throat to shrink its thymus gland. It's unlikely to help. Bye everyone. Do you think she's pretty? Yes. What would you rate her? Yeah. She's a boy. Oh shit.